At this point, we have our height field, we have our scatter details, we have finished uh, and exported our texture maps. So let's let's get into uh, rendering a little bit. So there's a slight uh, mid step that I like to do to prepare this for rendering. You just kind of isolate a specific geometry that I'm going to use for rendering. So since I'm going to use uh, displacement, and I just need a simple geometry that I can uh, displace. So uh, let me show you what what we need to do to prepare it. Uh, I'm going to drop another geometry container here. Uh, here, name it to uh, I don't know, let's say dusty uh, render, and that's going to be my rendering uh, container. Uh, I'm going to drop a grid. Uh, that's going to be my starting point. And since now I'm going to have to match like everything, like position and scale, uh, to the uh, height field version because I want like the actual render displays to be in exactly the same position orientation and height displacement as the actual uh, height field. So I know that my half field height field is thousand by uh, thousand units. So I'm going to set my grid uh, to that. Uh, so when uh, I'd like to increase a little bit resolution just so this basement has a little bit of a uh, nicer uh, head start. Uh, as you can see here. Uh, for the actual uh, center position, all the thing that I care about is it's like vertical or, or the y-axis, and I'm going to actually source that. So if we go back to my Dusty height field node, the last node here, my height field visualization node, uh, if I click, click Compute Range, I get my minimum elevation and max elevation. And the minimum, minimum uh, elevation, that's actually the lowest point uh, of my height field. And that's actually the one I had to like offset uh, the uh, my uh, render geometry because I'm only going to be like displacing from that point uh, up. So I can like copy this parameter, uh, go back to my dusty render one, and just come here and paste that as a relative reference uh, in the Y. And now you can see it's the same as uh, as at minimal elevation. Okay, so we have our geometry, but since we're going to apply textures and displacement, we also need uh, UVs. So let's drop a, a UV project node. Uh, UV uh, project node. I'm gonna like initialize the node just in case, but maybe that's not even uh, necessary. So we can get some initial UVs, but you can see there are some problems here, uh, like things are mirror and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm going to drop a UV transform node. Now, what I need this UV transform node is couple of uh, is actually uh, three reasons. One reason is that uh, I would like to kind of fix this flipped uh, texture issue that you can notice here in this uh, with like number letters being flipped. Uh, second one is that usually when applying you know, these levels of tileable displacements, you might get some errors on the edges. So I just want to slightly scale the UVs to avoid that problem. And in order to actually match the same uh, angle and position as in the height field, we need to rotate it uh, as well. So for the uh, UV um, settings, we need to rotate it on the x-axis by minus 90 uh, degrees. Uh, I want to set the pivot um, for everything to 0 0.5, just so I'm scaling from the from the middle, and I'm going to scale just uh, slightly to 0 0.99, and I'm going to set the negative scale to minus, just so I remove the uh, solve the flipping uh, problem. So this is my height field now. As you can see, this should probably now match the uh, the texture orientation scale and. Uh, and and uh, um, and everything to to be uh, exactly the same as as f as uh, it would be actually rendering the uh, the height fields uh, uh, itself. So this is everything that we need to do to actually set it up for uh, for rendering. Uh, let's disable uh, all of this uh, and now let's actually uh, switch into LOPs and create a uh, rendering network. Uh, over there. So drop a lop node uh, so we can enter the, the lop context. Uh, right now we're in like a karma perspective. Uh, we can switch to OGL just for the faster um, interactive speed for uh, for now. So what we need to do is now we need to import our, our objects. First one, uh, we use a SOP import node for that. Uh, the first SOP node that we want to import is actually the uh, dusty render. Okay, so that's that. This actually imports our uh, our grid that we made, and the second one that we want to import is the scatter one. So, uh, if I saw and go, I can just choose the uh, the dusty uh, uh, scatter uh, as well. So these are our scattered rocks. 
the tree created and this is our uh, geometry and now we can like of course merge them all using a merge node uh, and uh, we get uh, this now uh, we need to work on the uh, materials i'm going to drop a material uh, library node uh, right over uh, here I'm going to dive inside and create a material first for the uh, height field for mantra i'm using a uh, principal shader uh, as you can see uh, uh, only now, on right now, it only has like base color and settings. So, if I switch now back to Karma, uh, that shader should be uh, applied. Uh, if not, make sure that assign to geometry here and to all uh, geometry primitives is uh, is uh, is selected. Uh, okay. And this is what we uh, what we have. So we can dive in, and now uh, we can work on the shader. You can see if I change, uh, it will not uh, immediately uh, react. So what we need to do to set up this shader, uh, like this first one is pr probably going to be uh, pretty uh, simple. Uh, I don't want to use any point colors, and I don't want to use any both sides uh, rendering for this. Uh, for the dusty height field. Uh, we will not create like specific roughness map, so we can just set the roughness here in the shader to something like uh, 0.7. Uh, I think that's uh, that's okay. So let's just import the textures now. We can switch to the textures tab, and for the base color, let's click on use uh, texture. Uh, we can go to our uh, hip and just choose the uh, the our uh, one of the textures that we have uh, created in COPS. This is our Dusty C, which is a color one. Uh, let it uh, process. Uh, okay. Make sure that our base color is set to white, so we get just the the straight out uh, color from the textures. And here, let us make sure since you're using EXR that this is color space is set to uh, to linear. Uh, that that covers our uh, our uh, base color. Uh, the last thing that we need to do for this shader is actually uh, using a displacement. So coming to here, displacement first, we need to enable texture displacement. That's our first uh, thing that we need uh, to do. Then we need to choose our texture path. We're going to use the baked out um, uh, like height texture, and just to make sure that. Uh, our texture color space is again set to uh, to linear. Uh, since we want to like displace only f like only up uh, and not have any offset, we need to set the offset actually to be uh, zero. Uh, that's uh, done. Uh, displacement along normal as, as a default settings is exactly what we need. Now we need to talk about what our effect scale is supposed to be. Uh, so this is the actual like height, this the displace height that we need to uh, do, and that's actually actually easily to determine to make to match the height fill uh, completely so what we need to actually do is that uh, our displacement should actually be if you go back to our height field and back to our visualize node so our height is actually a difference between maximum and minimum elevation so maybe we can even copy those parameters uh, go back to our uh, lop node uh, back into our material and here now in the effect scale uh, maybe we can introduce uh, this. So uh, Alt E to bring the uh, the attribute expression editor. Uh, let me raise this, and uh, we can uh, actually paste the relative uh, reference. Uh, delete this extra stuff over here, uh, and then. Let's just do this, uh, minus, copy paste that. So it's not max elevation. I think it's min uh, elevation, right? So this should work. Apply, accept, and you see 136. And now we should be getting the exact same height uh, as our height field. So if we ever go and change our height field, we just need to calculate the uh, visualization node in the end to get the final results. And now you can also see that uh, rocks are matching as they are. They're laying on the, on the surface. Uh, we have our displacement and we have our colors. Uh, one more thing that we can add, since we're working like with height fields, uh, we haven't baked out any specific normal maps, but we can bake a little bit of high frequency specific details uh, without actually having a normal map. Uh, how? Well, actually, by using a little bit, uh, a little trick, uh, so we can actually come here to bumps and normals, uh, enable them, 
uh, and then actually uh, use a color uh, texture as a bump map. So uh, I'm going to set my texture type to uh, to uh, bump, uh, make sure it's linear because it's CXR. I'm going to choose now my color uh, texture. And this is going to add a little, little bit nicer high, high frequency kind of surface variation, especially once we introduce uh, lighting, which you will see. And I'm going to increase the scale. I found that the scale of six uh, look good for, uh, for what I uh, actually uh, uh, needed. Uh, zooming out. Okay. Uh, and that basically sets up uh, our shader. So we have our uh, color, we have our roughness, uh, and then we in here in the texture tab, we have set up our base color texture. Here we use that same base color as our bump texture as an effect scale of six. And we have used our displacement texture as a displacement along uh, normal with zero offset and a effect scale, which is a, a relative difference between minimum, maximum and minimum elevation. Uh, going back to our LopNet, so let's just add a shader for the uh, stones as well. Uh, this one is going to be very simple, so let's drop another material uh, library node, dive in, uh, let's create another principled uh, shader. Uh, you can name it if you want, if you're less lazy uh, than me. Uh, for this shader, uh, actually, I want to use uh, point colors. I'm going to keep that one enabled and it's going to increase actually the roughness to something like 0 0.8. Uh, and then you can play probably with the base color just to you, you if you like want to mix it a little bit. Uh, okay. And then uh, right over here. I'm going to set this as assigned to geometry and again to all geometry uh, uh, primitives. So if you isolate just this, you can actually see how that looks. And we can go in and now maybe we can just play a little bit uh, with setting up maybe we want our stone to be just a little bit darker, but again, pull the color variation from the, from the point colors. Okay, back to our merge node so we can look at everything in context. Okay, uh, now we're getting errors because uh, this material and the other material are the named the same. So make sure that you have like unique names. I'm going to have this called uh, Matt Dusty. Uh, and just going to, for the sake of it, going to come here and give this a Matt Dusty Rocks. So we are avoiding any naming uh, conflicts. Okay, so we have imported both our uh, rendering geometry and attached the shader with displacement to that and our scattered geometry and just have a simple shader uh, for that. So uh, that is our dusty geometry. Uh, let's add a uh, mer uh, geometry uh, like frame for that. So this is a dusty render. Now let's add some like nice rendering elements uh, uh, to this. First thing that we need is we need a DOM light uh, because I want to render everything with an HDR. Uh, the one I'm using uh, is from HDR uh, Heaven, and the one that one is I'm going to show you which which one it is. Uh, I am uh, using uh, HDR Heaven, and the one I'm, I'm actually going to use for this it's called. Uh, uh, Gambrig at 8K, uh, it, uh, that's the one I, I prefer for these uh, height builds. The moment you select, you're going to see it's going to start uh, uh, rendering. Now we're finally getting some shadows and all the details from the height field, from the displacement and from the bump mech is actually uh, popping out. Uh, I think that you can leave most of the, uh, the like settings for the HDRI by, by default. So intensity at one, uh, I think it's uh, it's okay. Uh, exposure, maybe increase that to one. Let's see how that looks. Maybe a bit stronger one. Yeah, I kind of like, like this, especially for the, for the dusty one. Uh, uh, I would like a bit different position for the shadows. So in the transform, I'm going to rotate it like 25 degrees uh, in the y-axis. And I'm also going to rotate it 5 degrees to again get a little bit longer shadows uh, as well. Let's see how this works. Maybe 15, maybe 30. Five. Oh, sorry, I'm translating all the time. Not translating. 
that's why nothing is working rotating so 25 degrees in the y-axis to orient it and five degrees so get a little bit longer shadows i like this like nicer distribution uh, nicer distribution of uh, of shadows and and bright areas let's just zoom in a little bit to see how everything looks okay feels nice uh next thing that we need to do let's just set up a, a camera so we can drop a camera node drop that connect it switch here to the uh, camera one uh, lock it so we can position it so for the camera let's find a nice angle uh, for this I would like to set the focal range to something like 100. I think, think that feels like a bit nicer focal range for rendering height fields. And let's find a nice looking angle for the height fields. You can play with this uh, at any point. Maybe something like this. It's gonna work okay. Cool. this is our camera so let's disable the the lock mode uh, and the last thing that i want to do just to kind of set up the final rendering is uh, dropping a karma node uh, which is gonna hold my final rendering setups that i want to set up here and there are some things that i would like to change from the default just so i have the best possible and the fastest possible uh, render so i'm sure that some of you have made some maybe better optimization workflows for the karmas but here are my settings that uh, that i did so uh, i suggest that you increase like the minimum ray samples to uh, something like uh, two and then let's play a little bit with uh, with limits so uh, diffuse limit, uh, I like to increase the, the diffuse limit uh, just to have some more uh, light in the scene. So uh, let's put that to something like uh, maybe four. Uh, for this one, I don't need any refraction, so maybe we can reduce that to, uh, to one. Uh, other things which I like to set up just to make sure that uh, it's rendering nicely. First of all, in camera effects, I want to disable the depth of field. So here in uh, in geometry and, and shading, I want to uh, make sure that my uh, ray bias is a bit, bit bigger because you're rendering huge height fields. So I'm going to drop that to 0 0.01. And just for the dicing, which I'm kind of setting up my uh, displacement quality, I'm going to increase my dicing quality scale to 2 just so we have a nicer uh, displacement. And now we can let this uh, render and check out the uh, final result.